this is Chris with Phoenix Gaming, and today we're going to go over the tournament I just went to on Saturday. It was just a local RTT, not a ton of players, but there were some pretty good ones there, and it was a lot of fun, and I just wanted to go over my list and how I did. Like I said, we're going to do a list recap. I'll talk about what I brought. We'll even talk about why I brought what I brought, and then we'll discuss how my round one went, how my round two went, and how my round three went. When we get to round three, I'm going to get to the table a little bit, and we'll talk about how that game went, and we'll talk about why we're discussing that game out of the other two. And then at the end, we'll do a recap, just kind of my thoughts on my list and what I could change to make it maybe a little bit better and why. This is my RTT list. For my characters, I brought the Archon. He had the Art of Pain, which just gives me a pain token while he's on the table in my command phase. He was very good. And Art of Pain was very good. Generating that extra pain token is very handy. These were some of the first games where I was actually struggling to generate them. And a lot of it just had to do with the armies and matchups that I faced. I did bring a Succubus finally. First time I've gotten her on the table this edition because she's not almost 100 points. And I gave her Blood Dancer. And we'll we'll get into that in a little bit because I, I actually had some pretty positive interactions with them. Lilith and Drazar, and they just come with me everywhere I go. You know, those are just my buddies, and they're coming with me everywhere I go. For my battle line, I did bring three units of ten Cabalites and two units of ten Witches. Obviously, the Cabalites had all their special weapons upgrades, and obviously the Witches didn't because they don't get those right now. In addition to that, I had three Venoms, a Raider, two units of Scourges. I brought one unit with Dark Lance, one unit with Haywire. I had two units of Talos. They had the Twin Liquifiers and the Haywire and the Gauntlets. And then the Incubi were a unit of 10 and the Mandrakes, unit of 5. That pretty much rounds out my list. So I put Cab Lights and Venoms. And really, I think that's, that's the general consensus on how to use Venoms. I've considered putting Witches in Venoms, but I just can't justify it. I need witches to actually actively participate in the game, and I just don't feel like five witches can. They can't advance and shoot, whereas, you know, if I put the splinter rifle on the sergeant, he can advance and shoot, and he gets the unit to advance and shoot, etc. And, you know, the splinter rifles themselves are assault. So no advance and shoot on the witches means they're not getting around the table as fast as maybe some of the other things. And five witches, I don't know, will withstand a lot of the counter swings because I don't think they're going to be able to kill enough to mitigate the counter swing as much as 10 will. I did have witches positioned in terrain for screening and counter swings, objective grabbing, and we'll talk about that when we do our table, our, our table overview uh, for round three. Drazar and friends, I kept them in the boat most games for a good chunk of the game. Again, for that round three, round four cleanup, there is one exception to that, and we'll get into that. And then the Talos were there really for just objective holding, you know, getting to the objective and, and just staying on it and just making sure we get rid of vehicles. And really, because the melee strength eight, neg two, three damage with the gauntlets, they're going to chew up a lot of even like really durable infantry. I typically put one Venom with friends in Deep Strike, and then I put one Talos in Strategic Reserve. The Scourges kind of varied game by game. A lot of games, like every game that Dark Lance has stayed on the table, and I think one game I put the Haywire in Deep Strike. Round one. Played Zach, super good kid. Played him at a couple events before. Vehicle Heavy Templars list. He brought two Redemptors, a Gladiator with last Cannons. I don't know which one it is. A Repulsor Executioner, two Rhinos with Devastators. He had Sword Brethren, just a massive brick of them, with Hellbrecht, uh, an Apothecary. And then he took the Feel No Pain, and then the Apothecary gives the Sword Brethren a 5-up instead of a 6-up when you take the, the Feel No Pain for Black Templars. Like, those guys were tough to shift because they had a 4-up Invuln, 5-up Feel No Pain, and I believe the Apothecary might let them put a model back. I don't remember at this point couple rhinos, both the rhinos had devastators in them, and the devastators had grav guns, which I don't think that's a bad take. Like, I think he has a very solid list. And the only issue I saw with his list was once his unit started getting removed, he still could hold objectives, but he struggled to push around to do the more mobile secondaries, as you can see on the score. 
You know, if you look at his score, or he got a tempting target in assassination round one, which kind of stinks. So I, he didn't have the mobility to get his tempting target. Round two, he discarded on both gain of CP. Round two, he took area denial and behind enemy lines. And he definitely got area denial. I didn't have anything within, you know, the middle of the board. I was I was actively trying to avoid it. I might have snagged it for something. But it was just with like a five mana Cabalites. And he was not getting in my deployment zone. Our deployment zone for this game was um, sweeping engagement, which is the weird corner to midboard one. And so he was not getting in the deployment zone that early. Again, just because his army was a little slow. I got turn one. My Mandrakes got to push up. And I charged into his Rhino and just kind of move blocked him with some Mandrakes. And maybe that's not the best use of them, but because of where we were, my Mandrakes were dying turn one, one way or another. So I was able to move up, charge his Rhino, and then effectively move block his tanks and slow him down for a turn before they got picked up. You know, so he wasn't getting that because I kind of gummed him up a little bit. And then behind enemy lines, we talked about that. Extend battle lines, he did score. And capture enemy outpost, he did score. Uh, but I, at that point, I had done so much damage that he couldn't keep up. Now, he obviously did very well in primaries. And again, primaries is kind of where I struggle with this army. And I was trying to just not touch objectives. If I couldn't hold it without being seen, I was just not going to get on it. Because his, he had just so much shooting. I wasn't going to hold it. I wasn't going to stay on it. So it was just like holding one objective every turn, just trying to be consistent was my plan. You know, like I said, he did lack mobility. He was hard to peel. I will say that my Haywire did most of the heavy lifting. He oathed my Talos every chance he could. And so I was picking up whole units of Talos because it was just like so much shooting. And I, I just couldn't make enough saves, couldn't make enough feel no pains. But that did allow the rest of my army to kind of function and go where they needed to go. My Scourges were very clutch. Being able to jump out. What I would end up doing is kind of move things out and wait to see where his overwatches would come. And if he didn't overwatch, fine. But like I was trying to bait them with different things. And occasionally it did work. And really he just didn't overwatch a ton because he was using his CP to do other things. Like slap things into different doctrines on turns where they weren't supposed to be. Stuff like that. Uh, he did pop smoke quite a bit. So that was also important for him. Man. That army-wide six-up feel-no-pain on a marine, like a vehicle-heavy marine list, is pretty rough. And his dice were muy caliente uh, early on, right? Like, they were on fire. I think the first two or three turns, he just... The only way I did damage was with Haywire, because it was like, cool, you're just not rolling dice now. You get your feel-no-pains, but I'm going to throw so much Haywire at you that it won't matter. But, like, if he got to make a save, he made the save. A lot of times he was making those feel-no-pains. It was it was funny. It was very exhausting. Overall, very close game, 66 to 63. I had just been able to get enough of a lead at the top of round five that when the bottom of round five came, there was nothing he could do. He, he There's no way he could squeeze any points out. So, uh, again, great game, Zach. Enjoy playing with you a lot. It's always a lot of fun. Round two, I played Mark. So Mark's not new to 40K, but he doesn't do a lot of tournaments. You know, he was kind of in the same boat I was in where he was not super thrilled with the state of 40K at the start of the edition. So this was kind of his coming out. He played a really good game. He struggled on secondaries, but again, it, it was a lot of the same issues that Zach had. His list didn't have much mobility, and I understand why. You know, there aren't necessarily a ton of highly mobile marine units. That is probably one area where they are fairly weak. It was interesting, though, because his list was almost pure infantry. And man, I will tell you, Lilith and the Succubus, they did so much lifting. Absolutely so much lifting. And honestly, I think the big difference this game was he, he forgot to bring in his Inceptors. I had forgot he even had them in Deep Strike. And then turn four, he was like, oh, poop. And I was like, man, just bring him in. Wherever you want to bring him in, I don't care. I was in enough of a lead, and it wasn't like, like, he's such a good dude. I'm not going to sit here and be like, no, you didn't bring them in on turn two or three. They are dead. It was just like, just bring him in, dude. Do your thing. A lot of fun to play with. He was a good dude. And, you know, it was cool to see a different kind of list. 
The Infernus Marines are rough, again, just because of so much of our stuff is T3. And even even into the Venoms, where it was just like, ha ha ha, pick them up, because it's just so many dice. They had to get rid of those pretty quickly. But it was funny, because I, I was looking, and I was like, man, I have an open charge here. I could turn one charge if I advance and charge with the Succubus and her friends, as long as I get a solid advance roll. And I was like, ah, I don't know. That just doesn't sound like the smart play. And Mark was just like, do it, coward. And I was like, all right, I guess I am. And sometimes sometimes that's what I need. You know, I don't, it's, it's not that it's a bad idea. It's that I'm just not sure if I want to commit to something like that. Like, because if it doesn't work, I could be in trouble. And as soon as he was just like, do it, coward. I was like, all right, I guess I'm doing it. But I'll be, I'll be darned if they didn't basically wipe all his assault intercessors that they charged. I think he had one left. It was uh, not a bad trade. And then they, they ended up getting effectively blown off the board because he just fell back. And uh, when he fell back, they just uh, evaporated. But that was okay because that was all his shooting kind of staying back and being in his deployment zone, shooting at that one unit instead of moving out and maybe picking off some of the other stuff. All in all, I think Mark had a really cool list. He was a really nice dude. The only thing I really think his list lacked was a, an effective way to deal with any bigger vehicles. But I don't really have any, so it didn't affect our game a ton. I will say he did struggle to take down the Talos, even with all the dice and the rerolls of oaths and stuff, just because I was like, okay, cool, they're minus one to wound. Three up save, five up feel no pain, six up invuln. Round three, played Necrons, played David. Third time I've played him in an event. I'm one and two against him right now. Super nice dude. Love being able to play with him. He brought 60 warriors with reanimations and all the character support and everything they can do. And, man, uh, I've fortunately for me, I've played against a very similar list, if not this exact list before, because of my buddy Dan. I met Dan in Kansas City, and he's just known locally where he's from as the reanimation guy that's just all he's ever done so just being able to have some foresight on how to approach this list helped and what tools i needed and fortunately i had all the tools i needed so it was very helpful for me so my big plan we played the supply mission where objectives disappear we still had search and destroy which is the table quarters deployment zone and we'll go over all this on the table and chilling rain. So what we ended up doing was I got my my secondaries, I tagged the middle objective, and we'll go through like a play-by-play -play in just a little bit here. And But my plan was to, to take the first disappearing objective and try to hold that. Hold it for my turn three scoring, because I knew he was taking the other objectives. So get my points there, and then focus on removing him one at a time. So we used GW Train. And rather than me just talking about it, let's let's just hop to the table. I've like butchered this video so much already. The reason we're doing this this mission, as I mark objectives and everything, the reason we're doing this mission is because I know a lot of people. I don't know about Drukari players, but I know a lot of people have struggled against Necrons, and a good Necron player will make you struggle. I'm not saying they won't. I'm just telling you this is what I've done that works. And as always, these may not be in the exact right spot. So let's get my black pencil up. All right, so turn one. I went first. I had a unit of witches here. I had a unit of witches here. And then I put my mandrakes here, right? And I think this objective is actually over a little bit more, but that's okay. They were hiding there, holding the objective, and just, just screening, because he had Veil of Darkness. So turn one, uh, I just advance my Talos so that we're right here. We're just enough to get engaged, because you only have to be three inches in. So I, I do that. I pop some Scourges out, take some pot shots, pop them back in. That's all I do. Nothing major, right? I, I literally do almost nothing, uh, and I get some Cab Lights up here. And I get him far enough away that he's going to struggle to charge onto the objective because his movement's not high enough to touch it. So that was my turn one. His turn one, he came up, grabbed this. I do have a raider over here too. Right, my raider. Uh, and it does have Drazar and friends. 
So he, he tags that objective with some warriors. He approaches the middle of the board, doesn't get there, and then he brings some warriors out here. So he's just fanning out to flood the board. And I'm like, all right, cool. Here's what we're going to do. Turn two, deploy teleport homers and cleanse. And so I had my my venom and deep strike. It came down right in this corner because he had something holding the objective. You only score for holding no man's land in this mission. But I put it down and they just, uh, they do the homers. I don't care. They're probably going to die. That's okay. So they go down. They teleport homers. I cleanse with my... I cleanse with my Mandrakes, and I cleanse with my Cabalites. And I actually might have kept my, my... I'm sorry, I'm looking at my score going, okay, I'm messing something up a little bit here, but it's it's not important. It's just minor details. Uh, but I cleanse with my Mandrakes. I cleanse with my Cabalites. I, I get enough Cabalites on the objective. I just cleanse it. I get my five there. I get my five for Teleport Homers. My Raider comes up here, and then my Incubi come here. And he's got his dudes kind of in the terrain. There's not a lot of line of sight. So there's not a lot of worry for Overwatch. And actually, I didn't even move my Mandrakes or Incubi there. I moved him in here because the charge wasn't too bad. It was like a six inch. I bring Lilith and friends up here. And we just, he and I just play for the first couple turns. Don't control the middle objective because we're both just trickling bodies on. Well, he's reanimating, but I'm trickling bodies on to just, like, take it from him, take it from him, because I've got a plan. So then, Incubi come out. First, first uh, the Raider charges, does a tank shock. Incubi come out. They tag it, right? Witches come in. Lilith comes in. They tag the middle unit. And so now it's, okay, he's got two units engaged. We have to make him decide where he's going to use his strat to reanimate. His warriors didn't live through the Incubi and the Raider, right? His character did, but his warriors did not. So it was just his character. I was able to wrap his whole character up so that he had to decide how he wanted to do it. He couldn't shoot me without trying to fall back. If he falls back, it's what, the desperate escape test? Because of that, we just stayed in combat. I got to kill him again. The witches did enough work that he wasn't able to reanimate all of them. And then he did get some swing backs, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So I now control this objective over here. And he doesn't have enough support to do anything about it. Because all his support is focused here. He's got dudes moving this way, but all his support is focused in the middle of the board. He does chip some wounds off with like his barge. Like he kills a few Incubi, I think, at some point later in the game. But for the most part, like that's where we're at. So I hold this one until it, it dies, basically. So then his turn three, or turn two, he kills my Venom. He reanimates more here, takes the objective again. Comes over here, charges, kills my Mandrakes, which is what I needed. That's what I wanted. Because now I've got one whole unit of warriors gone. And he's got to decide where he's putting his support. Lilith and friends, because of their four up invuln and like lightning fast reactions and stuff like that, I'm able to live through the melee. Succubus now comes up, tags this unit. And because the succubus, when she's empowered, she goes to neg four. So when she attacks, I'm just pushing him straight to feel no pains. Because he's got feel no pains in that unit, but that's it. Uh, so they're there. And I've got a Venom over here. I tank shot, kill a few things, charge in with the witches. We do that. And I'm still just, I've got a Talos just stuck right here also. And it's just throwing random shots and killing warriors. And that's the thing is like, I'm just, I'm just killing him a little bit at a time with him. Like even if I only kill two or three, it's just enough that when the witches swing, he has to use his reanimation strat. So, like, he has to keep keeping this middle unit alive. And this middle unit was the one with Veil of Darkness. So, because I'm in engagement range, I've just shut off his Veil of Darkness. So, I, I hold this one for turn three, right? And I know it's just going away turn four. So, I move my Incubi up to come support the middle now. Now, he's got a trail of warriors. 
and he's trying to keep him within range of the reanimator. So it's limiting his attacks. So what I end up doing turn three then is I've got like four witches and Lilith left in this squad. They fall back because they can fall back and charge with the strat. They charge in. My succubus. So now it's two units of witches with two characters on this unit. And I actually charge him like right here at the tail end. And what ends up happening is he ends up breaking coherency. And this was huge for me because, and that's the downside to the reanimation warriors list, is that if you don't have the reanimation ability, right, because he used the strat, I fought in the middle first, forced that strat out of him. And then when I fought here, he just couldn't do it. And then because he broke coherence, he ended up losing even more models. And so turn three, I effectively killed everything on this objective and then held it. So now I hold that one. This one's gone. Turn four. And really, turn four for him wasn't a whole lot of anything at that point because most of his list was tied up in three units and all their support. So with one completely gone, I'm now able to come over to the middle. And don't get me wrong, like, he is killing me because of attrition, right? Like, I can't bring bodies back. But he's just doing enough that I'm slowly losing models faster than him. But what ends up happening is turn four, he controls this. Uh, I controlled that one, right? So we both get our primaries turn four. And I'm not going over secondaries a ton. Because, again, the primaries were what was really important this game. Because I outscored him 33-13. to 13. So I held that one. And then what ended up happening there is turn four, I wiped the unit. I then send Lilith back in here. And she's got like two witches left at this point. But I send her back in there. I send the Venom in there. And it's just as a move blocker. That's all it is. And then... My other witches just form a bubble screen here so that he can't touch the objective without charging me because I had one pain token. I just empower them to fight first. Um, he opted to fall back with the warriors. And because he was engaged with witches, he had to make desperate escape tests. He picked up 11 of his bodies. Maybe it was nine. It was either nine or 11 of his models from falling back. And that was brutal. And he just couldn't get to the objective. Uh, I gave him no prisoners because we just both agreed that he'd be able to shoot me off the table with the things that could see them. But ultimately, like, he just couldn't take that objective because this was the one that dis disappeared turn five. So his whole unit was just there doing nothing. He scored at the end of turn five, and he just couldn't get there. And the real big takeaways from it, which is especially the characters, will do a lot of work into these reanimation style lists that Necron players are using as long as you understand how to use your terrain to keep that overwatch from happening, right? So when we are doing this, when I positioned my witches, like I said, I had a unit in here so he couldn't see them and a unit in here so he couldn't see them. And then when I charged the middle, I actually advanced them up into this pocket and then charged through the footprint at him. And that was just to prevent those overwatches. Like, I'm not trying to mess with it. So it's one of those where that's how you have to play them right now. And then here, what I ended up doing when I charged up here was I tagged him with the Venom first to shut off overwatch, then tagged him with the Succubus and friends. Again... Because they don't get to overwatch then. They don't have pistols. There's nothing they can do. They just get to get charged. It was a really good game. And I think what really hurt him the most was just that that one unit breaking coherency. He only lost like three or four dudes. Even when he reanimated, he was now out of range of the reanimator. So he wasn't getting nearly as many. And honestly, it might have even been the last like three warriors it might have just been the characters left after breaking coherency i don't remember at this point that's how that went he wasn't being rude so i don't want this to be misconstrued he was he was super super amicable but the frustration was setting in and you could tell and i think that's also why we got the the coherency break third game end of the day 
And it's a very eye-opening experience for Necron players to get charged by somebody's battle line unit and then just watch their whole unit evaporate. Lilith coming in and just being like, all right, I'm hitting on twos, wounding on twos, I'm sustained hits too. And if you use her once per game ability, you can just get 12 attacks and you can fish for those sixes. Uh, there have been times where I've spiked and rolled like six sixes, so I got 12 hits plus an additional uh, what, 12 hits, so I'm like 24 hits or something silly like that. Her by herself will do so much work. And then the witches for Lilith are good because they're wounding things like Necrons on fours and they're neg two instead of neg one. So it's one of those, like, they're very, very solid. Like, I've always said Lilith is an auto-take to me to, because of how I play. It's, it's a very eye-opening experience when they've only picked up whole units to a handful of things like like a unit of crisis suits will evaporate a unit of warriors especially with the cyclic ion loadout and on cow yon and if they've got tetris and they're just like ah here's here's my 57 shots that yield like 600 hits or whatever like yeah those are going to evaporate also but a lot of things won't just pick up a whole unit of warriors right now especially not in one one go so they'll have that ability to kind of trigger reanimations and make you work for it, especially when they've got like the invuln and the feel no pain going and the reduce AP and all the things that they can get. So it's one of those where it's it's pretty pretty eye-opening for them. Like when the Incubi and Drazar come in and they're just like, pick them all up, dude. I'm not playing with them. That's been my experience pretty much every game I've played against Necrons is if I can get them into melee, they're losing at least a unit, right? Especially if I can tag them with two units. If I can tag them with two units, it doesn't matter what you reanimate. Like, you will not recover from this. And then the fact that the Lilith, you know, fights first. And then you can make the Succubus fight first by empowering them. Also is very important. Because now I get to do my damage before you all the time. So it's, you're never taking full damage from a warrior unit. Hope you guys enjoyed that little recap. Uh, a little bit longer and wordier than I would have liked. So that's what it was, and, you know, here we can see the secondaries I drew. I got engaged on all fronts, like I said. Uh, round two, teleport, homer, and cleanse. Then I got storm, hostile, objective, and overwhelming force, and I just trashed overwhelming force. Then I got bring it down and defend stronghold. And then last turn, I got area denial and extend battle lines, and there was no way I was getting area denial. I didn't even, I didn't even try it. I didn't even think about it, you know. Uh, all in all, it was a fun event. I had a good time. And everybody was super cool. I like playing with them. They were a lot of fun. Let's talk about my recap. And this is really just my thoughts coming out of that tournament. I think witches and friends feel a bit better with the points drops. Uh, going from 185 to 145, and that's an estimate. I don't remember exact points. For the unit with the succubus is a really good points adjustment. And it does mean that you can effectively get Blood Dancer for free because of the points and still have points left over. And I'm going to do a whole video about the points drops and witches this week. And then my thoughts in depth about the data slate, including the core rules changes. Uh, I, I'm pretty positive on them. It doesn't completely fix the issues in the game, but it definitely moves it in a very good direction. We'll cover that. Uh, I still think Drazar and Friends are an auto-include for me. They got points drops, and I just this is how I play. I can't not play melee. It's just the way I like to play the game. So getting some getting some points drops to help compensate me for my lackluster melee feels good. Lilith, still the bee's knees, and she's cheaper, so I'll just keep bringing her. And honestly, I was really surprised at how effective the witches and the... Again, with the succubus and with Lilith. I haven't tried them by themselves. But they do kill Marines very well. Uh, the Witches themselves, I think, would need the Pain Tokens to really be effective. And part of the reason they were so good is because Succubus' sustained hits, Lilith's uh, Strength Force on wounding most Marine units on fours. So I think that's a big part of why. But all in all, wasn't upset with them. I do think my list is deceptively mobile and has flexibility. I want to test some Hellions with the points drops, but they didn't get a massive one. So I don't think, I still don't know if they're going to be good. They do have two damage swings, but no character support and no real good strat support aside from advance and charge means there's probably not a ton of play there yet. If I were going to change anything, I might, I might try to figure out how to bring in a Kronos 
round one and round three, I was definitely star for pain tokens because like the army wide feel no pain round one and a lot of invulns and stuff. I just wasn't removing units and with Marines having really good battle shock, they weren't failing it for the most part. And then round three, it was just Necrons, man. He, a, he didn't have a ton of units and B I killed units, but it wasn't like, Oh, I killed one here and I killed one here. It was just like, all right, I killed one. There's like a third of your army, but it took everything under the sun you know, so that, that might be some changes I might make. The big change I think for going first is I'm just not doing a lot. Most games now I'm just like, ah, uh, minimal movement. If I go first, it's minimal movement. Go. So that's, that's some, some other observations that aren't on the screen there that I had for everybody that's interested in the description are some Amazon affiliate links. If you like the content and buy army painter hobby supplies, consider using the links. They don't cost you anything extra and I get a small commission. I am a big fan of a lot of hobby. I am a big fan of a lot of army painter products. I use their speed paints. I use their paint brushes, their wet palette. So uh, generally it's a really good product for a really reasonable price. Check it out. Click the links. If you buy it using my link, I get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more, and you get to support the channel. I appreciate that. Big shout out. Immortals, Captain Too Tall, The Real Donnie G, Lord Wellingstone, and Daniel Bodecker. A bunch of great dudes that appreciate your support. Thank you so much. And thanks for watching.